We are live. Welcome to Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So, this movie was absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, uh, right, right. Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever review and thoughts. Yeah, um, wow. Yeah, uh, there there will be some jokes in this video, and I will definitely get into some serious stuff. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. And, yeah, I start the video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger. Yeah. Before I spoil on as I'm spoiling, so you can mute and skip ahead and just see me lower my index finger. And yeah, once I'm done with the review itself, I will be spoiling everything in the movie. And right, and and yeah, uh, I in the review itself, I will spoil MCU stuff leading up to this one, just not including this one. This tr trust me. This is not a good place to start. If if you're not already familiar with the MCU, this is not a great movie to start on. It's, you should watch it definitely, but you know, watch. Yeah, actually, honestly, I suppose you could if if you just watch the first one and then this. That 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 will be fine. But I I don't recommend making this the very first one. Now, the movie is rated PG-13, so is this video, and let's see, the, that brings us to the, let's see, is this one, um, yes, so, Overall, I do love all MCU movies. You know, I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2, and I'm not claiming that any of them is 100% absolutely flawless. But yeah, so I have ranked, you know, every MCU movie other than this one. I will include that in the ranking at the end of the review. But yeah, so ranking every MCU movie other than this one, Worst to best speed round. Iron Man 2, The Dark World, Black Widow, Captain America 1, Thor 1, Ragnarok, Hulk, Ant-Man 1, Ant-Man 2, Love and Thunder, Homecoming, Doctor Strange 1, Iron Man 3, Iron Man 1, The Avengers 1, Age of Ultron, Doctor Strange 2, Far From Home, No Way Home, Guardians of the Galaxy 1, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Black Panther 1, The Winter Soldier, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame. And... Let's see, that brings us to the... Right, so, uh, right, since we're still dealing with Corona, I want to say during this video, it is possible that I will touch my face. I want to assure you, I washed my hands since last time I was outside, and I will wash my hands again before going out. And, yeah, so I've, all, I've watched this movie once, but I will definitely be watching it again. And, let's see... Yeah, so the the plot. Wakanda is mourning the loss of their king T'Challa, and I don't think I really want to get into the Yeah, I, I don't want to give away the, the inciting incident here. Just uh yeah, the the less you know. You know, I I didn't have it spoiled for me, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. And that brings us to, yeah, so this is another one where, like, the, you know, the technical aspects, like, the people are extremely talented, you know, skilled, enthusiastic, it's, just, yeah. And then we, right, right, the, um, the 3D is amazing. Um, yeah, um, you know, sometimes it will add depth. Like there are things that 
like stick out at us. There are things that fly right at us. You know, it doesn't get like crazy gimmicky and really uncomfortable, but it is, you know, it is not quite as good as Avatar 1 and, you know, yeah, um, I hate to say it, but I think Avatar 2 will probably beat it, but it is quite good. It's I, I would say it's worth spending the extra money to watch it in 3D. So, um, the writing of this. This was written by Ryan Coogler, who also directed it, and Joe Robert Cole, and... I have to admit, I um, I do feel bad. Trust me, but yeah, um, right now, the only um, the only Ryan Coogler I'm familiar the, the the work I'm familiar with is the the MCU stuff. I I know I know you don't have to tell me because I know I I gotta watch Creed at at some point, obviously. And, uh, let's see, uh, oh, so, yeah, he didn't direct the second one. Oh, he's only, yeah, he only wrote the characters, so I guess he didn't, okay. But, yeah, I'll definitely watch the, the first one, and, uh, yeah. And I've also heard Fruitvale, Fruitvale Station is supposed to be amazing. Joe Robert Cole, let's see, that's right, yeah, he did also write the, they, they wrote the first one together as well. And then he wrote All Night and All Day and a Night and Amber Lake. I am not familiar with them, I'm afraid. Um yeah. The the writing is, is quite good. Like it's it's wild how many different things the, the script has to juggle and the fact that nothing feels like it's just you know there, like it just had to be there, so it's just, you know, because cause I'm sure that some stuff was, like, you know, as as happy as Marvel is with Ryan Coogler for the massive success, and deserve it so, deservedly so, the, the Black Panther one, amazing movie. They're still, like, they came to him with a list of things that had to be in this movie. I, I'm sure of it, and he did an incredible job because like I I'm not sure that I could really like I, I'll, I'll grant there, there are a couple of things where I was like that's there because they want to sell a toy of it but by and large like there wasn't really anything where I felt like okay that you know it doesn't feel natural doesn't feel organic that that thing is there it's there because MCU, you know, I love the MCU, but I'm not blind to how, you know, it is sometimes overly focused on world building and building up to the next big thing. And sometimes it detracts from the, the thing they're doing right now is that they're filling the thing they're doing for right now with setup for later. And yeah, it didn't really feel, I, I've heard some people say that they felt Riri Williams was this, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, I didn't feel that way. So, uh, the movie handles plot twists very well. There are not too many, they're not bad, and they're not too few or too easy to figure out for the viewer. I mean, I, I would definitely say there's, like, a couple of things that, I, I wouldn't call them twists, but things that you will see coming, that you'll guess before you get the reveal. But I don't think it's stuff where you're supposed to be just completely, you know jaw on the floor kind of thing. Moving on to the direction, so yeah, directed by Ryan Coogler and let's see. Yeah, so right, I, I made a couple of, of notes, things that I wanted to, to get into. So I maintain that phase four is good. I I honestly great. I I guess I understand what some people really take issue with, but I just don't, 
I, I would say it's better than Phase 1. I'm, I'm really glad that they're finally allowing this freedom for the MCU, because, like, you know, if you haven't watched Phase 1 in a while, you know, I still love it. I'm not, you know, I'm not trash-talking it, but boy was it, like, tightly wound, like, every single thing had to fit in. And then with Phase 2, they started, like, getting a little less intense about it and now with phase four like i don't know where things are going and i love it i'm just like i'm not unhappy that when i watched phase one i knew we were getting a regular avengers movie you know it feels like I mean, it was still it's still an amazing accomplishment but today we need something more and i really feel like if they were just yeah i i, I love that they're introducing so many new worlds in this phase so many characters that have such incredible possibilities anyway yeah so you know i suppose you know if yeah if you don't like phase four you're not gonna but but i do think this was a very satisfying ending to phase four and yeah and yeah, so um, the next thing I noted to, to look into is, is this a satisfying sequel to the first movie? Since the first movie was the best looking, sounding, best soundtrack, best choreography, most willing to have real life colors of the MCU when it came out. And yeah, this is a satisfying sequel. Like, I, it's, it's wild, but just, yeah, some, some of these, like, the the just the the vivid colors and the 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 soundtrack holy crap yeah ab absolutely amazing um yeah and yeah and in you know in the fir the first movie makes Wakanda feel like a real place where people live work you know so another thing you know does this movie do that for Talo Khan and yeah it it they made it feel like a real place I, I yeah I'm amazing um, yeah and right so yeah the the uh, let's see Right, I, I, you know, some people said that the, you know, the CG in the climax of, the, you know, the first one, there was too much CG in the climax, and the CG wasn't completely convincing. This one handles it better, I would, I would say. And yeah, so grieving is one of the one of those universal yet taboo things. We will all do it at least once in our lives, if not for people, then for pets. So it's extremely important to do it well in media. I had heard this did a good job, and I was skeptical because it's how how like I'm not saying that the MCU can't do this kind of thing because they did an incredible job with WandaVision, which is still my absolute favorite MCU Disney Plus show. But that had the the running time to to really let that kind of thing breathe. This is a multi, you know, massive blockbuster movie, you know, big set pieces, and it's, it's amazing how well it handles the, the grief, um, yeah, I, um, let's see, there was this, um, yeah, there was, there was, one of the, one of the critics said, that though Chadwick Boseman, R.I.P., does not appear in this movie, he his presence is felt throughout, and it's very true. And and it is this like in in real life, you know, when you lose someone that was important to you and the people around you, it's like there is this filter over everything, or like a like a like a heavy load to carry everywhere you know you just you can't get away from it nothing you do can completely just you know and, and most you you know there's there um 
yeah, I guess that's a spoiler for that movie, so I won't say what movie I'm thinking of, but there's... Grief is not something you ever finish doing, it's something you learn to live with. It is a lifelong process. And I, I speak from experience. I've been grieving for, uh, I guess by now, over 25 years. Uh, more than half my life. And uh, uh, roughly two-thirds of my life, I suppose, is, is the better way to, to put that. You just, you eventually learn to, to live with it to, to where it doesn't drag you down, to where it doesn't completely destroy you. And the movie does an incredible... I, I I understand if you don't believe me. I I wouldn't... Like I said, I was extremely skeptical. I, I couldn't see how, how you could possibly do it with a movie like this. Um, Ryan Coogler is a genius. I, I, there's no other way to, to explain. It's just, it's, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch, uh, everything. He, he, eventually, it'll, it might take a while, but I, I, yeah, I, I, obviously I'm not expect don't worry I'm not gonna give like negative reviews to other stuff he's made because it's not MCU I get that there are gonna be very different movies from this but just ah, it's it's amazing um yeah the the movie actually manages to to capture the the yeah the this and and something that's also you know one of one of the things about grief for for a long time there was this very limited idea of what grieving is like for a long time you're always unhappy you're you're always quiet you're always crying you don't want to be around other people and then you know some people didn't grieve quite like that and other people would be like what are you doing you're not grieving right and that's completely the wrong way to do it uh, you know everybody grieves in different ways and something that I really appreciate about this movie is for a lot of characters in this you see how they individually grieve the the loss of T'Challa and it never felt like it's just, you know, yeah, it, it felt legitimately respectful, you know, and it is also, like, it's one thing for, for us to go into watching the movie and be, you know, huge fans of Chadwick Boseman, but the people making this movie worked with him for years, you know, and, like, f for them it was extremely important that this movie showed respect towards him. That it didn't feel like they just, you know, didn't care. That that they just felt like they had to, you know. And and yeah, I mean, again, I I try to be realistic about the MCU. Obviously, this is the kind of thing where if, like, if Ryan Coogler and and the cast and crew were like. It's going to be a while before we're okay with making, a, you know, if, if they wanted to take, like, years off, you know, Marvel Studios, you know, yeah, someone from there would have been like, we can't wait that long, we're going to get somebody else to do it, uh, you know, and not necessarily be respectful, uh, you know, so, yeah, um, The, you, you can really tell that the people making this movie loved Chadwick Boseman and miss him. And they have no intention of, like, this is, this is not about, you know, who cares that, that the, you know, the, the Black Panther is dead. It's, it's not about just, we gotta hurry up and replace him. Get back into the mines. Get back to the into the factory. Who cares that, you know, no. And let's see. Right. So, yeah, I have some um, 
yeah, some critic quotes. Like most sequels, it is bigger, but it is still an intimate story. Angela Bassett delivers an award-worthy performance, absolutely. Most of the movie, you do not feel the long-running time. Honestly, right, but there are a couple of times you do. I never felt it. I, absolutely not. I was, I was 100%, yeah. And it's not that the movie is, like, constantly in a rush, either. The Ironheart suit is great. I'm really looking forward to her solo show. You come to the movie for a tribute to Chadwick Boseman. Would you stay for Namor? Cathartic for how they handled the loss of Chadwick. The actor playing Namor is spectacular. I would almost say that he steals the movie, but it is a lot about Wakanda. The handling of the underwater stuff is even better than Aquaman. It feels practical, like they actually went under the ocean to film this. Too much story. 90% of the plots are handled well, but 10% feel like they could have been in another project, especially Ironheart. It's not about stopping the bad guy blowing up a city. It's about how people in the real world react to Wakanda having all this vibranium. The plot was muddled in the middle. I don't like how Ryan Coogler shoots action. The place that the climax is set makes it feel smaller than earlier action scenes. Okay, uh, treats their own. And I suppose that is it for the... But, but yeah, um, I do love Aquaman. I do think that's a really... I think that movie really works, but I do think it also makes a couple of uh, spe very specific decisions that I disagree with them on, and that I think were done better here. And yeah, you know, the the underwater stuff in in Aquaman, there's a lot of like these very bright, uh, very strong colors in in undersea stuff, and it gets very um, it feels more fantasy, more fantastical, where here it basically does feel like, yeah, you know, what, this is what it would look like under the circle. I'm, I'm not going to give away the exact explanation for the under, underwater stuff, but based on the explanation they give, this is basically what you, you know, where, and, and again, I'm, I'm not saying that that's a, you know, this is not a place where Aquaman really, like, Aquaman is an adventure movie, you know, I mean, there's a part of it where they go to the desert, and they're, like, you know, looking for relics. It's it's an adventure movie, you know, and that's great, and I'm glad for it, but this is a bit more of a, and it feels silly to say realistic, since the, you know, this whole thing of, yeah, uh, Namor and his people, but, but yeah, um, it, it is a, it, it's, it's not that it's afraid of being a comic book, but it's, it's, um, it's a bit more interested in, like, real world stuff where, yeah, ultimately, Aquaman the movie was more interested in the comic book, you know. And I think it is also, you know, yeah, that was the choice that Aquaman made. And I still, you know, I could I could sit down and watch that movie tomorrow, uh, you know. But the, um, yeah, I'm glad that they made a different choice here. And, you know, yeah, for sure, you know, people are going to be comparing these two. And in my opinion, this comes out on top easily. But it is the kind of thing where, you know, yeah, it actually, apparently some of the decisions they made on this were specifically because they wanted to avoid being compared to Aquaman. I, I'm i really, really glad that Aquaman came out first then because they really made some incredibly inspired decisions here. And it was apparently partially motivated by not wanting to seem like a... Just, yeah, like they were just doing the same thing. Now, uh, let's see, that brings us to the... Right, yeah, um, I don't want to detail the opening. What I will say is that 
right from the start of the movie, we do get the sense that this is going to be about losing T'Challa, losing Chadwick Boseman, and yeah, it, you know, I'm I think they did an incredible job. I think I think they made the exact right call, and just yeah, they they. Uh, Because they chose choose to open on you know they could have chosen to to open on something else and then go to, but no it starts with this very clear realization that you know they're going to have to accept the death of of T'Challa and basically everything in the movie is that you know it's it's consequences of his of his death it's you know it's trying to find a way to make things work without him and just yeah now I am not gonna give away whether the ending is happy or sad but it fits with what came before I think the ending is absolutely perfect there is no deus ex machina or other convenient writing and let's see Right, so this do, this has a mid credit scene, but apparently not a post credit scene. I, I read online, and I didn't stay to check, because the movie is long. So, you know, and I, I don't think I've ever been tricked by an article claiming that there was, you know, no. The, apparently, there's only the one, there's a mid credit scene, and once you've watched that, and the end credits continue... You, you can leave the, the theater and, and not miss anything. And... Let's see... That brings us to the characters. So... The... I don't want to get into who is the, the protagonist of this, so I'll just talk about some of the characters that I think are worth uh, really talking about and you know yeah talking about without spoiling anything so yeah Letitia Wright returns as Shuri the princess of Wakanda who designs new technology for the nation and yeah she she gives a really strong performance uh, you can tell that she's really struggling you know it, like it's it's one of those things where it's like I mean technically I knew I, I get we all die at one point but I didn't think he would die you know it's that kind of thing and she really she she fights to to uh, keep it together and ah uh, what was the other there was another significant right right it also you know it's worth noting she's I, I forget let's see was she I think she was snapped she returned after the snap or, or blipped yeah she was blipped so she hasn't particularly aged so she's still like what 20 years old or something you know way too young and, and again I speak from experience you know you should not be that young when someone important to you dies. And, yeah, um, you know, she, she is, she is the last of her mother's children. And that is something, you know, there, there's some early scenes where you know, her mother really expresses this is, I, you know, I can't lose you too. We, we have to, yeah. Lupita Nyong'o returns as Nakia, a war dog undercover spy for Wakanda from the River Tribe. And I'm not, I'm, I have made the decision that I'm not going to spend an eternity praising the acting of Lupita Nyong'o because everything I see her in she is amazing you know she's amazing in these MCU movies she is just her performances 
plural in us. Holy crap. I don't I don't even know like Yeah, um yeah, I, I know some people think that black people can't act, that they only get to be in movies because of, like, affirmative action or something. Watch us, and then tell me that black people can't act, because... Holy crap. Um, right. So... Danai Gurira returns as Okoye, the head of the Dora Milaje. Wakanda's all female special forces, and again, you know, yeah, she's great. Yet again, it's it's not really a, a you know, a surprise, but it's it's great to see her again. Winston Duke plays Mbaku, a powerful warrior who is the leader of Wakanda's mountain tribe, the Jabari, and yeah. Um, Duke indicated that following the Jabari's involvement in the events of Infinity War and Endgame, the tribe is no longer isolated from the rest of Wakanda, and he felt that M'Baku was trying to figure out how to move forward in this new world for Wakanda, much like many in the real world were trying to do in regards to the COVID-19 pandemic. And, yeah, um, I wish he had more to do, but you know they give him some some really great material and yeah I do really appreciate because you know I just I rewatched the first one just a couple of days ago and yeah it's a very different you know like when you watch the first one like you can see that there's there's room there he could be like integrated with the others because he's not like a complete you know he's not a monster or something like that he's, he's you know but there's some way to go, and that has happened off screen, and now he is part of and and yeah, just I I will I will never say no to a Winston Duke. Just you know, again, us and Florence Kasumba returns as Ao, a member and the second in command. Of the Dora Milaje, she also has some really great moments. I just, I will, I will never tire of her. Just such an utter badass. Um, yeah. Dominique Thorne plays Riri Williams, and I don't think I want to go too much into her character. I just want to say, she's, yeah, she's, she's really great, and the, the. Ah, what's the word? They have some really great character stuff with with her. Tenok Huerta plays Namor, and I'm I'm going to go ahead and he he actually says that Namor is what his enemies call him. So what he you know, to his people he is known as. Oh uh, wow! I just realized I, you know what I I fear I would butcher it. So I guess I will for now continue to refer to him as Namor. And and yes, the, the they don't pronounce it Namor, and from watching the movie, you will understand why it is Namor. And it, yeah, he is. Uh, do I wanna? Yeah, I already mentioned uh, Talokan. So, yeah, he is the ruler of Talokan, an ancient civilization. And, yeah, um, Huerta learned a Mayan language for the role, as well as how to swim. And, yeah, um, I gotta see him in, in more stuff. He did an absolutely incredible job here. I'm really, really happy to have the character in the MCU, and to have this incredibly talented person, to, to have him playing the role, is it, so good. They, they really, yeah, uh, I've, uh, I want to say her name is Sarah Finn, the casting director for the MCU, 
the unsung hero of the MCU. Not all heroes wear capes. But but yeah, um, and and you know they they because they changed it to Talokan from Atlantis, they can include real Mayan culture, helping bring visibility to that culture, doing for Mayan culture what the first did for African culture, and it's yeah I I love it and and the the. Apparently, the reason that it's Talokan instead of Atlantis, part of it at least, part of the reason is because they didn't want people to hear Atlantis and be like, oh, like Aquaman, like that movie. So they, ch I, I, I find it difficult to put into words how happy I am that that was the, the, yeah, um, and people who know way more about it than I have done YouTube videos on what exactly Talokan means to... Yeah. Um, yeah. And... Let's see... Martin Freeman returns as Everett K. Ross, an agent of CIA, the CIA. Angela Bassett plays Ramonda, the queen mother of Wakanda, who is grieving the death of her son, T'Challa. And I've seen others say that she gives an awards-worthy performance. And yeah, um, she's absolutely amazing. It's, it's, yeah. Um, let's see. Right, and Mabel Cadena portrays Namor's cousin Nemora, and Alex Livinali portrays the Talokan warrior Atuma, and they're they're both great. Like, um, they have to deliver some really, like, there there are scenes. And they just, they do an incredible job. Now, um... Right, uh, a couple of critic quotes regarding characters. Fun cameos, didn't see them all coming. Namor, the backstory is handled really well. They show more than they tell. The actor gives an incredible performance, sometimes sinister, sometimes charming. Ramonda stole the show. Letitia Wright did incredible acting, proves that... Uh, I suppose that's a spoiler. Free Freeman is great. The jokes for Ironheart are to MCU, and I could maybe see. Yeah, I I didn't necessarily love them. It's difficult to watch the film if if to follow the film if you haven't watched everything from the MCU and Disney Plus MCU. There's no room to breathe because of how much the film has to pack in. And let's see. Mbaku is too small of a character compared to the first. Nakia is almost just a plot device. And let's see. Emotionally, for me, it's on the same level as Infinity War and Endgame. No, really. And, right, the the dialogue. I I have to praise. They actually. They made the decision that this features a lot of different languages. And, like, yeah, like, those, the people of Talokan tend to speak this Mayan language, you know, and when the, you know, sometimes the people of Wakanda will choose to speak Wakandan, you know, for, for very private moments. And this is, like, if you, if you're an immigrant, for example, or, or your parents were, you might notice, you know, some... So some of the people who who leave their their home country for another country after their they've become they, after they've uh, yeah after they've come of age they might revert to their original language sometimes for really private moments or when they just get like annoyed you know they might swear in the original language you know things like this and 
you know, the, the first movie did this with Wakanda as well. I'm just really glad that they did it again. Uh, it, it really fits. It really works. Um, yeah, uh, they go to, you know, some places with real world languages as well. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, no disrespect. I'm just saying, you know, ultimately the, the Mayan language and Wakandan are made up. They do also speak, oh boy, am I really gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try. They do speak Xhosa. Actually, wait, is that what they speak when I'm saying Wakanda? I guess that is what they speak. The, the Yeah, um, that is an actual African. Yes, I, I realize now I made that mistake. The Mayan language is, is you know, yeah. But the, the when the Wakandans speak, it's, it's yeah. The, the dialogue, works real, it, it really tells you a lot about the people, how they speak, when they speak, uh, who they choose to talk to. Like some of the, some of the Talokan people will not speak directly to outsiders. They'll, they'll discuss amongst themselves and let their actions speak for, you know, so, yeah. And the uh, uh, character characterization is great. Uh, you know, some of the characters we see in very varied circumstance. We see what they're like when things are going well, how they respond to things going wrong, etc. And that brings us to the cinematography by Autumn Gerald Arkpaw. Now she has. 13 movie credits as DP. Ah, right, and yeah, some of them are music videos because IMDb still puts that there. Anyway, um, yeah, the apparently she did not shoot the the first Black Panther movie. I don't know a lot about her, but I could definitely imagine... But yeah, let's see. So stuff she's shot that wasn't music video includes Macho and Guadalupe the Virgin, Palo Alto. I think, I'm thinking she has, and, and also based, you know... Actually, I can't quite tell from, from the name itself, but yeah, based on some of these titles... You know, she's maybe someone who is good at filming stuff that has this South American kind of texture to it. And, yeah, uh, I can imagine she was she was chosen based on that, and I'm glad I think it really paid off, because uh, it really does, like, at the end of the day, like, we are, we've seen Wakanda before. It had a whole movie, and... It uh, it appeared in several, you know, in in, um, you know, it, it played a major role in Infinity War. So we've seen Wakanda, but Talo Khan, we haven't seen that before, you know. And and in Aquaman, you know, yeah, they they made the conscious choice to not make that this Mayan thing, you know. I I forget what it. What did they say that was? I, I forget, but I, I don't think it was South American at all. Um, yeah, uh, so, so you know, with this one, they, they chose to, to do... And, and yeah, it, it really, really works. Uh, let's see, there... Um, yeah, I I felt I I could easily follow the action scenes even, you know, like there's some really fast you know, some things happen really fast and sometimes there's a lot going on in the frame and the camera work made it easy to to keep up. And that brings us to the editing which was handled by Michael P. Shaver. 
and yeah, he he also edited the first Black Panther, Creed, and Fruitvale Station. So he and Ryan Coogler really like working together clearly, or they would not have worked on four movies. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, the editing, like this, is you know really really. Um, there's, there is, ah, what's the word? It's, it's very trimmed down and very, like, there isn't a, there's meat on the bone, but there's no fat there. Like, you, there's nothing excess. There's nothing you could remove without losing something. And I, you know, if you think, you know, I, I if you think you can point to something in the movie where you could just remove a chunk of the movie, you know, not, not even even just even just a couple of minutes, you know, put in the comments. We'll, you know, I I I believe I can exp I uh, that yeah, I'm I I I'm willing to try to change your mind at least, and you know, because I yeah. Um, I, I would definitely say that they managed to there's there's nothing here that doesn't absolutely need to be and and part of that is how much legwork it has to do how many things it has to accomplish for just the one movie but even so it's it's very impressive and that brings us to so yeah, the the action is handled really really well. Um, yeah, you you know we have chases, you know, in vehicles in water. We have physical fights. People will shoot at each other, including shooting while in vehicles. And yeah, you have use of of superpowers and and such. Yeah. It's it's uh, they they do a good job with the variety like you know sometimes it's you know fairly straightforward just a couple of people fighting other other people sometimes there's you know fighter jets involved sometimes it's underwater sometimes it's in the air sometimes it's on the ground it just yeah and I'm not gonna give away exactly who the antagonist is but I will say they're very memorable and the score is handled by Ludwig Göransson I think he also did the first one uh, let's see Yes, he, yeah. So he did. He did both of these, and he has done other really big, uh, yeah. And just yeah, he does an incredible job. Like the music just fits. You know, some of it is specific to Wakanda. Some of it is specific to Talokan. Each time, it just like you could, you could close your eyes and just listen to the music. And I'm not going to be John Favreau and say, you know, it would still make the most amazing, you know, the, the rest of the movie technical aspects also need to be solid. But you could close your eyes, listen to it, and you'd be able to tell where we are and what we're supposed to be feeling. You know, is it is it wonder? Is it fear? The Just, yeah. And, you know... I realize that sounds like a really low bar. Let's be honest, there are a lot of big movies that don't actually clear that bar. Like there's a lot of movies where if you just listen to the music, if you if you close your eyes and you don't know what's going on in the movie, the music isn't going to tell you. It's just like fast-paced because it's an action scene or it's a little more low-key because it's trying not to be, you know, 
some some filmmakers don't know how important music is. Ryan Coogler is not one of those filmmakers. And let's see. And it's all like Ludwig Gorenz. I I don't think I've ever been unhappy with one of his scores. Um, he he makes some really really interesting unusual music sometimes, but it I've always found that it fit the the project. The sound design is great. Um, this is they have to make you believe that there are people in this movie that can exist underwater without any problem, and just the, you know, just the this thing of 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 breathing, because the moment you you see someone seemingly breathing underwater without an air tank your mind is gonna be like, nah, that, that can't be right. And the fact that they always always look and sound completely comfortable with the, the you know, being completely submerged and seemingly breathing underwater, you know, that that is... Yeah, they actually managed to make that credible. And, and it's... Yeah. Now... So yeah, the the pacing. It's it's wild to me that this movie manages to both have, like. The action scenes are very fast, but if the entire movie was just non-stop action, it would be unbearable. You you wouldn't be able to sit through it. And they do actually have scenes, that feel like they're, you know, really giving room to breathe and, and really taking it slow. And again, you know, sometimes that is just how it feels when you're grieving. It feels like, it feels like things are moving slow. Not not slow motion as such, but just it, it kind of feels like nothing's completely happening, if, if that makes sense. Like, if... if like you keep trying to do a thing, and you gotta almost get there, but not quite. It, it even even if you even if you complete it, it feels like you didn't complete it yet, kind of thing. And the movie manages to. I I, I swear I I'm not making this up. I know it sounds ridiculous. I it's it's wild to me, but yeah. Um. So the movie. With uh, yeah, from from the start of the movie to the end credit start, it is two and a half hours, pretty much to the to the minute, at least according to my yeah, and yeah, uh, the movie uses it all. It doesn't no no time is wasted, and you know, and I'm I'm not saying that MCU movies never. Waste, you know. I I would definitely. I I had issues with how some of the time was spent in Love and Thunder. And yeah, so you know, for comparison, the first movie is two hours and three minutes. You know, before the end credits start, and the you know the post credit scene ends at two hours and fourteen and a half minutes. So, yeah, this is longer than that, and yeah, I I don't th you know I I saw someone say that um, they thought it should have been was it twenty minutes shorter I I don't know how I I wish that person had put in their review this is what I would cut but yeah. And, yeah, you know, if you're not interested, maybe 30 minutes into the movie, if, you, if you're still not interested in the rest of the movie, I'm not sure the, the rest of the movie is necessarily going to change your mind. So, the best element is probably tied between the representation and just how well it deals with grief and how respectful it is of Chadwick Boseman's legacy and um, this is where I'm supposed to get into the the worst aspect I don't I mean I, I don't have much 
to criticize at all. Um, yeah, I don't. I got nothing. Now, something that I saw others say was a big problem for the movie for them was they called it boring and overlong. Neither are complaints that I can at all understand. I respect their opinion. They're they're entitled to their opinion, but I do not understand how you could. Yeah, anyway, um, I was most worried that the movie wouldn't be able to recover from losing Chadwick Boseman. And the movie managed to ex exceed my expectations. And I was most looking forward to seeing the result, results of things that have happened in the MCU before this film. And yeah, the movie exceeded that. Like, it actually does address, you know, what what is the situation now for Wakanda. You know, last we saw Wakanda in a Black Panther movie you know, T'Challa was going public. He was telling the world what Wakanda has. And, yeah, this this movie offers a very realistic, very credible answer to what happens when everyone in the world finds out. Uh, but, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, so the, the trailers do give at least a little too much away, but they also give you a good idea of what the movie is like, and it's difficult to advertise movies like that. You know, ultimately, there was a lot of great stuff that wasn't spoiled at all in, in trailers and such. And that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes. So... Right now, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has this has 85 percent on the tomato meter based on 194 reviews. That's certified fresh, and the oh right, that's not how you do that. Um, yeah, uh, the the um, critics consensus. A poignant tribute that satisfyingly moves the franchise forward. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever marks an ambitious and emotionally rewarding triumph for the MCU. 164 fresh reviews, only 30 rotten. And there is not a clear audience score yet, but there, they have more than 1,000 ratings by now. And... Let's see, Metacritic. Ah, I might need to speed up a little my back is okay, so yeah, on Metacritic it has a 67 out of hundred based on 56 critic reviews. And on IMDB it has 7.3 out of 10. Based on 7,343 IMDb users, 22.4 gave it 10, 21.3 gave it 8, 11.8 gave it 9, 16.1 gave it 7, 11.12 gave it, 11.2 gave it 1. Look, if you if you really hate the movie. I just, I feel like, if, if you're review bombing this movie, are you proud of yourself? Like, do you look in the mirror and think, yeah, alpha male? I'm not saying, like, you, look, you, you are 100% allowed to hate this movie, but giving it a 1 out of 10, that's just, that's ridiculous. Like, what are you basing that? What is... Like, wh what one or few attributes of it are so bad that they just completely block off everything? Like, I'm not saying that everyone giving it a one is just upset that, you know, I get it. Nobody is happy that Chadwick Boseman is dead. Everybody miss, we all miss him. And, yeah. You know, for a lot of people, a, a lot of people don't want to see another Black Panther, but review bombing a movie 
just doesn't yeah again if if you were someone who gave this a 1 out of 10, who go, gave it the lowest possible rating, on IMDb you cannot give a 0. You have The lowest you give is a 1. Please explain to me in the comments. Un unless it's just review bombing, in which case you, you don't, you know, you still can let me know if that is. But, but please explain to me what about this movie is so bad that... Yeah. Anyway, uh, seven point four percent gave it a six. Four point three gave it a five, and just under two percent gave it a four, three, and two for for each. And yeah, the the special effects. There's still a little bit of CG, which I I, I really hope that the the MCU that that Marvel. Disney, that Disney start treating their, you know, special effects people better. But yes, there, there are times in this where you can kind of tell, you know, something doesn't feel completely convincing. But I would say the vast majority of the effects feel completely real. There, there's definitely a lot of CG in this movie. There's a lot of things they definitely couldn't have done without CG. And almost all of it is convincing. There's some really great stunt work in some of the fights and such. And that is about it. Let's see. So yeah, uh, I recommend this to everyone who enjoys the, the MCU. And if you don't really know much about the MCU yet, you know, yeah, you can just watch the, you know, these two movies and, like, there's a little, there's some stuff where you do need, like, other, yeah, I, I don't know, I don't particularly agree that you need to know, like, there's, there's stuff in this movie that you'll appreciate more if you've watched more than just these two movies in the MCU, but you can follow it just with these two and I don't begrudge it. Like if you're if you're watching these movies because you're not white, and maybe you specifically are black or South American, and you want to see representation in a huge blockbuster movie, you know, a movie that costs I guess it is around two hundred million dollars now to produce. Yeah. I 100% you you don't need my permission, but I'm just saying, I really don't think you should feel bad if this is the only part of the MCU. If if you just if you just want to see yourself on screen, because that really it matters, you know. And yeah. So yeah, um, I rate this eight incredible follow-ups to iconic films out of 10. I I probably won't watch it again in theaters because theater prices, but I'm, you know, I definitely will be watching it again and I really look forward to it. Uh, this is this is a movie that has a lot to Yeah, there's there's a lot there for you, you know. It it delivers the the usual stuff we know from these MCU movies, and also just yeah, this this it explores grieving and yeah. So that brings us to the so yeah um. I don't think I'm going to read out every single in the worst to best. I'm just going to say that this is yeah, I will I will just briefly so the the yeah, the very top ones. Worst to best. Winter Soldier, Werewolf, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Wakanda Forever, Civil War, Infinity War and Endgame. Yes. The fourth best.
I love this movie and yeah, I yeah. This really, you know, the the best we've gotten since Eternals and that is I know some people didn't think that movie really worked, and I respect their opinion. But from me, that's that's high praise. I thought there was very little about that movie that wasn't like I'll. I'm not saying it's perfect, but you know, I did a video talking about. It. I'm not going to talk about it right here and now since I did that. So that brings us to the notes sections I'm just really quickly going to and huh interesting um not ideal ah here we go oh phew I was kind of worried there for a second that I was screwed. Okay, so the there we go. So notes taken while watching so Yeah, um, there we go, spoil the time on. So, um, yeah, I meant to say earlier in the video that this was where I was going to get into the, um, ah, what's the word? That I was going to start this section by saying who the new Black Panther is, but I forgot. To, yeah, I don't know, uh, I guess if you have psychic powers and you realize that was it and you skip the head to here the new Black Panther is Shuri so yeah we start with Shuri in the lab trying to save T'Challa's life and I really appreciate like because we see you know the, the um, Ramonda was apparently with T'Challa's you know, um, she must have been watching over uh, T'Challa while he was dying, and the the T'Challa, um, when 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 they found out that he was, you know, very very close to death, Ramonda made the decision to go and watch over him, while Shuri did what she could to try to save him, because that's, you know, the, yeah, the, they they they're they're dealing with it in in different ways. I thought the burial scene was very moving, and I I really liked that the the Marvel Studios logo was all T'Challa, and it was very somber. Uh, you know, it it wasn't like sometimes. Yeah, it it varies a lot. They they've done very different things with it, but you know sometimes it's like very celebratory, and it's like this is going to be an amazing movie, and here it is legitimately. You know, focusing on this this really tragic death, and yeah, we we go to to one year later, and we see how things have really gotten pretty bad with you know the you know at, at um, in in Geneva at the UN, Wakanda is being criticized for the uh, what's the word. You know, yeah, pe people don't think, yeah, and and we see this outreach center on Mali be attacked, and 
you know, it, it was really, really cool to see that the Dora Milaje were there to stop the Vibranium Thieves, and just this thing of, like, we see the, the Vibranium Spears be capable of incredible things in the first movie, but I'm pretty sure it, was, it wasn't until this movie that we saw their We know that the material, we, we are aware that the material can deflect bullets. Um, Peggy Carter helped demonstrate that to Steve Rogers once. Or, uh, uh, stop bullets, rather. Not not always deflect them, but, but stop bullets. And, yeah, now it is, you know, yeah, the Dora Milaje can move so fast that they can block the bullets with spears. That's, that's freaking amazing. And, yeah, we go to the Atlantic Ocean, and the lights go out, and we get, uh, I guess, three minutes, maybe five minutes, of a horror movie. And I quite appreciate that. Um, yeah, because we're seeing things, you know, you, you might be, you might be wondering, what, why is it so scary? You know, it's this Mayan thing, it's not supposed to be scary. But, you know, we're seeing it from their point of view. We're, we're not seeing it from the Talakan point, point of view. We, we do later. We later have scenes at Talakan where we're seeing things from, from their perspective. But no, this, this is from the regular people perspective, and they have no idea what's going on. Which is, of course, exactly how, you know, the, yeah, Talakan people want things to be and you know and and they are basically just defending themselves you know it's 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 grim it's brutal what what the Taliban people do but you know the these people were like yeah at at the end of the day like um it's not like the the people of Talokan don't know what colonizers are. They do know that's what the you know and and you know, let's be honest, the people in the movie aren't exactly doing a great job to convince them that they're just yeah. And, you know, they do this siren song thing to make people jump overboard, which is just the most horrifying you know, it's I I feel a certain level of comfort knowing what my nightmares are going to consist of for the next month. Holy crap, this, this, and, and it's just, it's such a good, because that is, like, the, the siren song luring sailors to their deaths. That is this really, really old, um, uh, see, I always mix up the words myth and legend. I guess myth, you know, these mythic sirens who, with their song, their sweet song, lure men to, to their deaths, and here, it's just, yeah, you know, because that's useful, that means that they don't have to, you know, I mean, essentially, it's like with, like, uh, um, would you rather chase the bug around with a fly swatter, or use a bug zapper, you know, so it's, yeah, they're, they're just being, they're, they're working smart, not hard, and I absolutely appreciate it, and holy crap, that is, that is absolutely horrifying, I mean, there's, what was it that Ross later said, there were 30 people there or something, I, I forget the exact number, but it was like, that's a lot of people to, to drown, and, yeah, um, you know, the helicopter tries to get away, so the sea people uh, attack and tear off the helicopter to holy crap. And... Namor himself swings the helicopter to, to win, which... Yeah, 
you know, honestly, if you if you can swing one of those around like it is a I mean <laughs> if he if he if it it could be an Olympic sport, honestly, uh swinging a, a helicopter like it is a disc to throw, you know, just yeah. And I quite like, you know, we see the uh, Wakandans flying back, and the the force field is made to to you know slide open, and they use it like they have their their hands and fingers in like water, and use that to manipulate. I don't know what it is, but I'm guessing it is like an old African thing. I don't know, present day African. Th I I don't know enough about culture to say, but you know, it's neat. I I really appreciate it. It definitely looked like something that was. Uh, what's the word? It looked like something that they that they based on, you know, African culture. And I don't think I ever got written down the name, but the, uh, was it Griot, maybe? The, the AI for, for Shuri. I gotta admit, I was a little surprised that by the end of the movie, that AI was still not running Ironheart's suit. But maybe they're working, like, setting it up, or I guess they thought it's been a while since we had a fun AI, you know... Yeah, actually, I guess last time we had a prop. Wait, yeah, yeah. Uh, must be, must be. Um, ho uh, not, not. Crap. Far, far from home, right? Because the last, the No Way Home was the last one. I think, I think Far from Home was the last time we had, of a, a voiced. Yeah, you know, Peter. In Homecoming, there was one, and then in Far From Home, there was Edith, Karen, and Edith. Yeah. I, yeah, I thought they had some fun moments with uh, Griot. And, yeah, uh, you know, we see that, I, I don't know, maybe I'm reading into it, but I couldn't help but think that Shuri is basically trying to build her way out of her pain, out of her grief. Uh, you know, she's she she says in in this very early scene that the people in her lab that is also I I really quite appreciate, you know, in the first one it was just like I think there was maybe was there at least one of the, the her lab wasn't like full of people in the first movie and now there are like a bunch of people running around and I think it I believe the lab is also bigger this time around that just does make a lot of sense like okay even if you're a super genius delegate you know you can't do everything all at once so it just makes a lot of sense and yeah um, she says they're working on figuring out anything that could attack us from the outside and they're trying to make a defense for it so so that they can't get in and you know okay you know tell you what if the movie hadn't had anything to do with grief that could that concept still does make sense you know it is logical to you know you want to you want to plan ahead you don't want to just have to react to things you you want to be ready for things but i can't help but note that it is in a movie about grief and essentially what she's saying is I'm in pain I don't like pain I'm not used to this much pain at least I, I don't want this to happen again you know I, I want to see if I can stop I don't want this to happen again and and, and we're gonna stop it we're not gonna happen again cuz cuz I got all these people on it and we're all gonna we're all gonna make it we're gonna make it super safe and and nobody else is gonna die and and this pain is not gonna be felt again, you know, and, and just, it's such a great, 
and and you know like if you're if you're like a child or teenager watching this and you haven't had to grieve yet you know maybe you don't pick up on that maybe you're just like ah oh, she's so smart super cool you know she's gonna make sure they you know that they're prepared for all of this stuff and let's see. yeah so you know Shuri um, you know there's this thing of they legitimately don't have the heart shape herb anymore and the you know and, and yeah in the first scene she was trying to synthesize one and later she does effectively synthesize one um let's see yeah i really appreciate you know cuz that was a pretty big thing in the first movie you know killmonger burnt all the you know he took one burnt the rest and it turned out they had managed to save one of them from but it's like they couldn't possibly have saved more than you know how were they going to you know, they, they, I forget who it was that managed to save one, but one of them managed to save one, and everybody else was, yeah, you know, so, and, and that is also a, a great, like, I mean, with, with him gone, with Chadwick Boseman gone, the movie is basically saying, we can't do that again, you know, no, no, there's no, there's no more, there isn't, He's a, he's a he's a human being. He's not like, you know, if, if you if you uh, misplace your keys, you know, you can have another pair made. But he's a human being. There's no such. There is no other one. There isn't. It can't. It's not possible. And for a lot of this movie, there is no Black Panther. There is no heart shaped herb. And yeah, I I appreciate that. I I feel like it worked really well as a metaphor for how he's irreplaceable and you know it's yeah it has been exactly one year since T'Challa died and Ramonda and Shuri you know yeah at, at first Shuri just basically wants to you know she apparently Shuri was not aware that it was one year I don't think that she wasn't aware. I think she was trying not to think about it. And yeah, you know, they they there's this ritual and you know, Shuri basically expresses she only believes in science. She doesn't believe in anything spiritual. And then later, you know, she sees Eric. She doesn't see her good ancestors, which is what she wanted to, you know, and he straight up tells her, you wanted to see me. This is, uh, you know, and, you know, Shuri outright tells Ramonda, if I think of T'Challa for too long, I'm not going to burn this, you know, um, ceremonial grieving thing. I'm going to burn the world and everyone in it, you know, and that yeah and Namor comes you know yeah comes to them and talks to them and yeah I, I really appreciated the way that and and both of them basically act like he you know he is potentially dangerous which it, you know it is kind of it's pretty creepy that he just shows up out of the, yeah and you know yeah they're is vibranium in Tal Khan, and it was found by human scientists and you know in in part Wakanda can actually go into other countries because they you know they are regular people and you know every single time that Namor and his people leave Tal Khan and, and enter another country there's some risk that they're going to be seen and people are going to look into, you know, yeah. So, yeah, they, they say, you know, you have to get us this scientist. And, yeah, Namor blames T'Challa because T'Challa told the world, we have more vibranium and look at all the stuff it can do you know like before people thought oh wow you know there's almost no vibranium 
in the world at all, all of it got out, and by the end of Age of Ultron, like, you know, basically all that's left of it is Vision and Captain America's shield, and, and nothing else, you know, and, yeah, so, you know, you can, you can understand why. And we go to Alexandra, Virginia, to meet Ross and Okoye and Shuri. I, I like that, you know, they can't just approach him. So they use the, the tiny little thing. And at first he's like, ah, a, a bug, I'm trying to work out. And it's like, oh, right. And, yeah, turns out that the person who built the vibranium tracker is Riri Williams, which I gotta say, that's a really clever way of working her into the overall, like, I, I know some people didn't think that, you know, yeah, I, I, I thought they did a really great job with, with that. It was a very organic way of getting her involved in the overall plot. And yeah, you know, she's supposed to be this super genius, so making her genius be a big part of just, yeah. Um, I liked how, you know, at, at first she, you know, she's like, uh, you know, when, when, like, when Shuri just knocks on her door, Riri is like, look, I got a, I got a website specifically because I can't talk to every single person in person who wants me to help with their homework, you know, and then she's like, you're Shuri, you're the princess, you're from Wakanda, you know, and, and this whole thing, and, and I forget if it was before or after Okoye showed up, but she's like, am I being recruited for Wakanda, you know, just this whole, yeah, I, I really, really love the, the, you know, this message of black women uniting and getting things done, and the, yeah, that's super cool, um, yeah, and, and the, you know, Shuri is like, Okoye, and, and Okoye is like, you said five minutes, I gave you six. You know, she's being extremely reasonable, all things considered here. And, you know, the, the um, Riri, like, throws a, what was it, like a heater or something at Okoye, who slices it with one of the spears and just, yeah. And they go to the garage. I, I thought it was quite fun scene with, you know, the, the car and bike chase. And yeah, get to the, the bridge and the, the sea people. Let's see. And... I like that uh, uh, Griot uh, basically made a universal transplant, you know. I jest. Technically, it is still, you know, the, the, the Guardians films apparently have a universal translator, but here it does, like, you hear the person say what they say in their own language, and then a voice translates it, but, yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's why... Griot was necessary so that they didn't have to explain why Shuri can understand the the, the Talukan tongue. And yeah, we find out that you know Ross already mentioned that he works for a woman who's like kind of intense. We find out it's Val. And you know that's that's a good like that leaves some that yeah, leaves that that create some groundwork, lay some groundwork for Thunderbolts, I think it's being called. The the team up with Val and the Yeah. And turns out that Val and Ross were married, which I mean I Yeah, I guess I can kinda kinda see yeah. And let's see. Yeah, o Okoye goes back and explains what she saw, and she's fired, and Ramonda gives this very fiery speech, and just, yeah, amazing. Just, I'm really, really glad, because, like, I was happy when they cast 
her in the first movie, but by the end of the first movie, I did feel a little like, I mean, if you're not going to give Angela Bassett something to do, I, it's really rude to just waste her time like this. Like, it's, it's, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure she was happy to be in such a big movie, but like, give her something to do, and this movie gave it, like, holy crap, that speech, that was, yeah. And we go to Haiti, and, right, I, yeah, I, I thought that, it, you know, it really worked with this thing of, because, the, the, yeah, it makes sense that Nakia would go to Haiti, and, yeah, Nakia, you know, did not go to the funeral, and, let's see, and it is this thing of, you know, she had to, she just, couldn't do it, she, you know, yeah, she had to take a break, and that's also how some people grieve, and let's see, right, the, the, um, yeah, I like that, you know, Riri is making movie references and I'm sure Disney Disney is very happy that the references she makes are frequently to Disney properties I mean once you've watched the movie maybe you could go on Disney Plus to say you know wait did Leia get forced to wear something oh I I mean I don't remember what that I guess I should watch the entire original Star Wars trilogy. It's on Disney Plus. There's no, there's no reason not to really. And what was the other one? Bell got some in in Beauty and the Beast. I mean, I will say this: she has taste. You know, the original Star, the original Star Wars trilogy, Beauty and the Beast. I'm guessing she's talking about the original, although I suppose it is possible she's referring to the live action remake but anyway and let's see the um, uh, yeah and and you know Sh Shuri has that line about you know why why can I do all these things with signs if I can't save T'Challa and uh, right, yeah, the, the Talcum backstory is handled really well, and Kid Namor sees the colonizers, and he says that, you know, Talokan and Wakanda can be together against the rest of the world, or, if not, then... Talokan will destroy Wakanda as the first of them, and yeah, you know, you can understand why. They are, they're, they're a huge threat or a, a great boon, and, you know, he sees it as there is no in-between. There's no, there's no third option. There's nothing, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and we, we have explained that the reason that he, you know, he says his enemies call him Namor, and I, I can't, I, I, it was something like the child who knows, and then the last two words in Spanish, sin amor, so knows no love, and, you know, sin is without the way, you know, con is with, sin is without, and amor is love, and sin amor, namor, yeah, that, that works. I'm not sure that has anything 
like that the comics I think in the comics they just they just thought Namor sounds good so that's what they went with but I really love this uh, yeah and let's see I really liked Namor showing Shuri so much of Talo Khan and explaining the history and all this stuff like it was clear he he doesn't really want Wakanda to be an enemy it is just you know it it's it's one or the other you you really can't have the yeah and let's see. so the Yeah, and, and Nakia says, uh, you know, he was everything to me, and the funeral makes it final. And... I really appreciate that by the time in the movie that Talokan attacks Wakanda, there's been a, a lot of build up like I'm so I cannot I can't put into words how glad I am that the movie didn't try to start with that for example even though like I could understand the the uh, what's the word the um, the urge to do so because it is one of the biggest action scenes of the entire movie and we do already know Wakanda we know every Wakandan who takes place, in, you know, who takes part in in the fight, but or the, you know the major ones, not not the you know supporting characters and such, not not all of them necessarily, but the you know they appreciate no if we build to it then it will have more of an effect and yeah you know even having seen you know I I knew from the trailers at some point there is going to be a fight between Wakanda and. And, and Namor and his forces and yeah um, the fact that you know this this is not you know Nam Namor didn't jump directly to this he could have you know the moment that he found out that because uh, like he he you know he knows that T'Challa is the person who told the the you know, like it's it's one thing that people are looking for vibranium on the uh, ocean floor. I think it's called. That's one thing, but you know, where do they get the idea? Well, what kind of, you know, we actually we never do find out. I mean, I guess. I mean, if they can if they can use that sonic weaponry to lure people into jumping into the ocean, maybe they have something that can listen to stuff that happens above ocean level. That that must be it. Some something like that. And yeah, you know, instead of like Namor could easily have been like, well, T'Challa's the one who told them, let's attack Wakanda. But instead, he specifically says. I don't want to attack Wakanda, you know, but I do consider the royal family of Wakanda, you know, at fault for this. But here's how you can fix things. You know, he's trying to be diplomatic. And... Uh, yeah, I really love when Namor is flying around fighting Wakanda jet fighters. And I thought that it doesn't make Wakanda look weak that Namor really kicks their ass, which is something that I don't know that I completely agree with it, but I did see some people saying that about, uh, you know, the, the first Avengers, where... Hawkeye, you know, with yeah, with just a few arrows, I did, you know, he he really does a lot of damage to the the heli helicarrier, you know, and the idea is to make the helicarrier uh, to to make Hawkeye look 
just amazing, but some people felt it made it look like the helicarrier just had a really obvious weakness. Now, and and I really love the water grenades because it, it like I mean at the end of the day, yeah you know obviously it doesn't quite exist in the real world, but if you think about it like, cause cause right now you know if there is an explosion, why is that harmful? It's harmful because the 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 air from there moves extremely fast. You know, this is a this is a slow mo recreation of that, and really far. It's not like it's not fire from the explosion. You know, it it can be like if if something gets lit on fire from the explosion, then it's the fire. But like the thing that really hurts is just the fact that you know that's why like an explosion underwater can also really hurt things that's not because anything's getting set on fire it's because of the really really extremely sudden and fast you know yeah expansion well what if instead of air it was water you know and and the the grenades like i would definitely say the grenades release more water than could just be inside them it's not just that they you know grab you know got got some water into into a canister and then made it you know explode so all the water comes out it's clear there's something more there but they have vibranium you know there's no reason why they couldn't and yeah it's just it's clever cuz flooding holy crap that is extremely dangerous and useful as as a, a weapon and yeah Namor explains in one week I'll return with the entire army join me or die and we see Ramonda die leaving Shuri as the only living royal which yeah just really really heartbreaking I liked Shuri and Mbaku together you know Shuri confronts him with what I thought you said I was just a child a child who scoffs at tradition and you know he admits I was wrong you know you're not a child you've seen too much pain to be a child still and we find out that Val bugged the the uh, what's it called the the pearl thing so she heard everything he said to to Ramonda and just I really like seeing more of Val um, and you know seeing her doing other things and just recruiting people you know we see her in the um, you know talk like it's it's Ross who gives the tactical advice but she is there and she is you know she chooses to to back him up uh, you know, so yeah, just like like seeing her in different situations because other than this, it's always just she's recruiting someone or telling them what to do next to someone she recruited. I realize this is completely out of chronological order, but I like that the first thing Waka uh, Namor said about Wakanda was that the air is better than than other places you know and yeah cuz they they always use green technology and let's see. yeah and and uh, Riri and Shuri talk strategy and i think it is true i i think it's accurate to the comics that something that's really useful against Namor is to dry out his his skin. That really drains his his strength. And we get the Midnight Angels, which I haven't read very much of them in in the comics, but you know, yeah, it's it's not a huge. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, talk, time talking about it, but just it's a little different in the comics. I thought it was really great that they worked them in there. Um, yeah, we get some montage of them preparing for the, you know, 
yeah, for the for the rematch. So yeah, you gotta have a montage for that. And we yeah, they manage to you know the make a functioning synthetic heart shaped herb melnick. And you know, they consider maybe she'll go into cardiac arrest and Shuri sees Killmonger and he confronts her and you know you have that great line are you gonna be noble like your brother or you're gonna take care of business like me and let's see um, what was the other thing I was gonna... yeah I'm I um, I'm really really glad that they managed to work him in because I will never be unhappy about Michael B. Jordan appearing and so I even liked him in that Fantastic Four movie. I you know a lot of things didn't work about that movie, but I think he did work fine. But yeah, uh, you have the um, it's yeah. The one thing is, I guess this is confirmation he did die because. There were theories we didn't see him die, you know. Although, you know, now that I rewatch this, like, I mean, we see him, you know, take the the spear and and pull it out of his wound and then collapse. Like, it's PG thirteen. It's not gonna get that much more final than that for for such a major character. For a minor character, they might get pretty definite. But yeah, um, yeah, loved seeing him again. And he has not forgotten how to play the role at all. Like, it was like, no, again, like, I yesterday or the day before, something like that, I rewatched the first one. And, yeah, it was like no time had passed. And for him, that is basically the situation. You know, the, the character, not the actor. Killmonger hasn't experienced anything in the in-between. He's just staying there in the afterlife. You know, he's not changing who he is at all so he's just as he he is the way he was when he died and yeah I really appreciate it it legitimately felt like he has just been you know waiting there for you know to to be able to to talk to to one of his uh, you know relatives in that that through the through the the process yeah and we see Shuri land in the suit. Very cool. I do wish that we hadn't seen it in the trailers, but, you know, I, I gotta say, I thought it was way too obvious in the trailer, so I honestly didn't think that she was going to turn out to be the, the uh, Black Panther. You know, but, yeah. And... Yeah, and and you know Mbaku, you know she yeah she the the face, you know turns the the face mask turns invisible so you know everyone can see ah it's Shuri in a Black Panther suit, and you know that does of course beg the question is she cosplaying, and picked a really weird time to do that or does she have the power you know so Mbaku is like okay I gotta I gotta find out and. You know, grabs her hand. Shuri, you son of a bitch. Just, yeah. Sister. Of a, anyway. I, it's, it, it, someone has to, to add that voice to, to that clip. Because it's, it's begging for it. And... Yeah, so they have... They, they set up a trap to take out Namor. And, and Shuri expresses, you know, she really... Yeah, she wants to kill Namor. And... So, yeah, the... the yeah, I quite like, you know, once we see the... It, once the, the fight starts, we see that, you know, Shuri's Black Panther suit has the sonic cannons that we saw her use in yeah she used it both actually yeah she used it in the first movie 
in Infinity War and again in Endgame. You know, so, yeah, but she does also kick and such, and I think she also uses the claws to scratch some, but, yeah, that was quite good. And and I really loved seeing Ironheart in full, just, yeah, and, and you know, I legitimately, I don't feel like, you know, I, I guess it's possible it'll, it'll change with her show, but... Watching this, I did not feel like Ironheart is just trying to replace Tony Stark. And that's obviously not... No, nobody wants a replacement for Tony Stark. What we want is more compelling characters, you know. And, I mean, other than the fact that they both... Let's see. They... They, they both started building things at really young ages... Other than that, there's almost nothing. I mean, she specifically said that her father, as, as far as I understand from this, her father is alive, and she, or wait, did, or did her father die, and she has the car to remember him by? Yeah, I, I okay, maybe there's the dead parents, but, but everybody. Everybody's got dead people, and every MCU character has dead parents. That's almost like there are there are almost no MCU characters who have like major I think Ms. Marvel is the only one where where the parents aren't dead. Like it's just it's 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 a it's a thing. It's a it's a whole thing. And Yeah, I uh, really love the fighting between Shuri in the Black Panther suit and Namor, both on the the ship and then in the the uh, the final location, the the deserty island thing. And Namor even stabs Shuri, and then Shuri frame flame broils Namor, which yeah, that's wow, and you know. When Shuri saw Eric, she was angry that she didn't see her ancestors, but now she sees, you know, Ramonda, and she says, "Show him who you are." And yeah, the the you know, she asks him to yield, which is just what her her brother said to Mbaku. Uh, you know, yield the the you know. It's not good for anyone if you die. And then she paraphrases what Black Panther says to Nemo. Zemo? Zemo. I always get that wrong. Zemo in Civil War. About vengeance having consumed, you know, and yeah. Let's see. Um, oh, right, yes, yeah, and we see this, yeah, so, so, it, you know, we get the wrap-up, apparently Kina and Ao are together, it's, a, it's again one of those things where it's so subtle, you know, it'll be very easy to edit out for the, the Chinese and Russian versions, you know, there's this, like, one of them kisses the other on the forehead and then walks off, and and you know the other one says thank you sweetie sweetie and then the other one walks off it's going to be super easy to edit out and i wish they would make a bigger thing of it but yeah you know. but at least we did you know we did we did get more representation in for for the um uh, gay, yeah gay representation and and black gay representation in eternals where you know, the, the two men are clearly a couple, they adopted a son together, you know, in addition to the, the scene of them, you know, kissing goodbye. Yeah, so, so, it's, it's not nothing, but it's, yeah. Let's see, and, yeah, so Riri leaves the suit in Wakanda, so I'm guessing she'll be making a new one in the Disney Plus show, and, yeah. 
and Namor, uh, you know, I, th I think it is Namor Ra who is like, why are you bending the knee to the Wakandans? And Namor uh, explains, it's not, you know, don't don't worry. We, you know, w w yeah, let's see, what was it? The, the, um, they allied with us because they don't have any other allies. Soon the world will turn on them. And then, yeah, I, I don't remember everything, but but basically, you know, it's not that he feels some sort of, you know, he's he's not thinking that they're like brothers, and they'll, you know, from now on, they'll always be helping together, help, helping each other, and working together. No, he he is using them basically, and that's exactly how I like mine more and. I am so glad he is in he is in the MCU now because there is so much they can do with him. Uh, just yeah. And Okoye frees Ross, and Shuri goes to see Nakia in Haiti, and Shuri burns the funeral suit, accepting that her brother is gone and. We get these clips of him from the first movie, and I think at least some of them are alternate takes that they, you know, they didn't destroy this footage just in case they might need it at some point, and then they used it here. I really appreciated that. Um, yeah. And the mid credits scene, Nakia introduces Shuri to Toussaint, Nakia's son. The Prince of Wakanda, son of T'Challa, T'Challa Jr., and yeah, that's, you know, yeah, that's going to be it. That's going to be a big thing in, in the future. Um, yeah, so uh, um, I want to say it was Screen Rant who did a really excellent video breaking down the the ending and post credit scene. I'll just I'll double check real quick. So I will refer you to them in. You know they they did a really great job. Uh, let's see, getting into what the. Uh, okay, let's see. Um. Maybe not. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Screen Crush, that's it. Uh, yeah, did a great job talking about the scene and what it means. And let's see, do I have a lot? Um, yeah, so according to an interview, the, the movie introduces nine new major characters and uses seven languages. I was worried that it was going to be overwhelming, but yeah, somehow it managed to, to not be. And let's see. Yeah, and you know, Namor no, no being Mayan shows respect for this ancient people who, like Africa, were victims of colonizers. The descendants are not treated with enough respect. And let's see. Yeah, you know, the movie features two countries in conflict that both have extremely powerful forces or forces and weapons. Imagine if the Soviet Union rose from the ocean one day in the 50s with nukes and America having nukes and declared a war on the West. Yeah. And, yeah, love seeing a female Black Panther. Let's see. Honestly, um... If the if Toussaint turns you know becomes um, a a Black Panther, you know obviously that's years into the future. But you know yeah, if something like that, you know I I would really love to see more trans representation, like open trans representation. Um, Jesse Gender talked about things in the She-Hulk show that really resonated with her as a trans woman, and I'm I'm really really glad. 
I would like one, you know, an MCU character that is like explicitly trans, you know, whether female to male or male to female, you know, but yeah, I, I really feel like there's way too much hatred towards trans people and I, th I think, you know, the MCU could help to, to make things, yeah. Now, let's see. Yeah, those were all of my notes. So, yeah, uh, hit me up in the comments if you weren't already doing so from made a couple of prompts you know over the course of this video already let me know uh, which do you think is the better uh, Black Panther movie uh, you know do you think there's some of the best or some of the worst or somewhere in between of MCU what do you hope for from Black Panther 3 what was your favorite part of Black Panther 2 and yeah if you like this video please thumbs up subscribe hit that little bell like it colonized Africa or ah uh, what's it called my, my um, yeah like like it is a colonizer there should be a link to my main channel page one two more links to stuff like relevant playlists a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about my spoiler thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is Andor. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.